Yes, let's have a look at the Paralympics for 2024. Australia overnight won two gold medals. Tom, we are smashing it. Yeah, right. Awesome. So... This first one belongs to Lauren Parker, who won gold in the women's paratriathlon wheelchair. And then we had a second gold in swimming for the mix for 100 meter uh, medley relay with Alexa Leary, Jesse Ongles, Timothy Hodge, and Emily Beekhoff. So they are doing very well. Australia is at sixth position overall on the tally. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. We'll get that up. Yep. I mean, six, yeah, I think I think we should... Uh, we're looking pretty good. We've got a bunch of great athletes behind us and there's still plenty of time. Yeah, I think we've got a really good Paralympic team, so uh, hopefully we can get closer to that number one spot. Yeah, we'll definitely see that. And Pixar's, Pixar's Inside Out 2 has now surpassed The Lion King for the highest grossing animated feature of all time. Guess how many Bill The Lion at? King remake. The Lion King remake. The live action remake. Yeah, how crazy is this? So I read the stat thinking... Well, the last highest grossing animated movie must have been the original Lion King. It was the remake, which was god awful. So yeah. I don't know how that worked. But, but it was more recent. It was more recent. But Inside Out 2 has surpassed that with how many bill do you reckon? Bill- billion. We're yeah. talking billions. We're in the billions for this oh, one. Oh, crikey. Uh, f- four? Four billion? Nah, 1.66. Okay. <laughs> Still a lot. <laughs> Way off. <laughs> four would be nice. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love it. And over in England, the first artificial intelligence classroom has started up. It's at a boarding school. What, no teachers? No teachers. So only virtual headsets and computer robots that are teaching the kids. This has caused a lot of controversy with people saying it takes away the human element of teaching. You should be able to interact with your teachers as humans. And this is just plain weird. It is 52,000 Australian to go to the boarding school as well. Jesus. Imagine paying that much. People complain about paying private school money as it gets really expensive. It does. Imagine paying $52,000 to a robot. robot. (laughs) It's not even human. (laughs) Mate, we need to have a chat about technology. How good and handy technology is it can also get you into trouble sometimes. Yeah, it really can go both ways. I'd say it really does lean towards getting in people in trouble a lot. I mean, and yeah, you, you hear, see it all the time. You horror hear horror stories. stories all the time, don't yep. you? People opening up and they've got their adult videos playing in the supermarket as you go to pay, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, we, sure. I've heard that story from multiple people. So You're many like, people have done it. It happened to me, so I know it's true. <laughs> I know it happens. <laughs> First-hand account. And, and, and this story I heard just yesterday absolutely sent me. I reckon this all is right. one of the biggest horror stories of being caught red-handed. With a red right hand. So what happened is uh, a maid of ours, mm. she was seeing this guy and she was over at his house and he's got one of these fridges with the LED screens on it <laughs> and you can connect these fridges up to your yeah, phone, right? Yeah. So you can do all, you can basically, you can play YouTube videos from your phone, it'll come up on the fridge, you can, it, it'll put up all your pictures that you have saved in your photo album on your phone and it'll just display them on your mm. fridge. Yeah, it's a really lavish way to upgrade your fridge. You know, something that was originally just to put milk in. Yeah. Now has a TV. You can put a <laughs> fake fireplace on it too. There's well, so many cool things. Maybe the TV on the fridge isn't the best idea because what happened was while she was over at this guy's house, the photo album started playing out on this right. LED screen. They started yep. dripping down. And she was looking at some of the photos and realised that a couple of the photos coming through were screenshots of messages. What? Yeah. So this guy has obviously got screenshot of messages. He hasn't just picked what photos go on the fridge. It's just any any photo in the album. Just yeah, completely it's just random. a random library. And she's seen these messages and she's given them a read. Turns out the whole time this bloke was cheating on her with someone else. Wow. Yeah. Cheating on her and caught by the fridge. Yeah. Yeah, caught red-handed. With a red right hand. The one thing that's supposed to be your friend, your ally in the house, <laughs> refrigerating <laughs> your goods, has turned its back on you and exposed you for being a cheater. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely insane. One of the biggest horror stories going around of technology. But we want to ask on the phones, when were you caught red-handed? What about catching someone red right-handed? Right, just red-handed. Red-handed. That's the song. <laughs> That's the Nick Cave song. <laughs> yeah, catching someone red-handed. I know someone caught somebody else out for cheating as well uh, by going on Farmville or something, and they were mingling with someone else on the online chat, going to each other's farms and flirting and writing stuff in the crops. Oh. And that's how they got caught. With a red right hand. 
just saying some really raunchy stuff in the cornfields <laughs> and the girlfriend saw her and exposed her. I guess we all thought this was going to be around cheating. Cheating, yeah. But no, because somebody texted through saying, caught my dog red-handed licking up shower water. Hey, exactly oh. right. Of course, is caught red-handed. Does not have to be cheating. Cheating on the dog food, I guess. <laughs> licking up something else. <laughs> <laughs> Got this one here. Find my phone always does the trick. Of course, the app where you can yeah track everyone's phone in yeah. the family. Caught the same boyfriend twice at this house when he was supposed to be at his mate's place from Sarah. Mm. See, I reckon that was the original one when technology first came out of tracking people and seeing where they go and heaps of cheating stories came from that. Yeah, absolutely. Michael's texted in here as well saying, I was caught red-handed through Snapchat by my miso who thought I was on a run but just went to the pub with mates. Jeez, both probably have the same consequences, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you would be pissed. It's on here. I caught my dad red-handed drinking my beers. It was on Father's Day, so I gave him a pa- gave him a pass, but I'm still salty. Yeah, you can't blame him on Father's Day. Out of out of any day of the year, it's the uh, only leeway. Depends how many beers you got left. <laughs> here, let's head over to Plimpton. We got Kylie on the line. Kylie, good morning. Did you catch someone Hi, red-handed? Okay. Hattie, yeah, I did. Yeah, who'd what you catch? Um, my, uh, I'd had dinner the night before with my girlfriend and her new boyfriend. Mm, okay. And then I was working in hospitality and working in a reception desk of a hotel. And the the next night, the guy rocked up to check into a hotel with a different che- different girl. Whoa. Oh. And I served him at the counter and I was like, hi, good to see you again. I haven't met your girlfriend, is it? And he was like, uh, yeah. yeah, so he just got stumbled. What happened? What was his big excuse? Yeah. Uh, he had no excuse. I just acted very professionally, politely, checked them into the hotel, and then sneakily went out the back and rang my girlfriend. I was like, you'll never guess what happened. Oh, I was going to say, surely he knows by a second into your interaction, game's over. Oh, he knew. You're going to tell he the girlfriend. Knew. 100% yeah. he knew. I could see it in his eyes, and he was just like, oh ready to like argue but he was already defeated <laughs> Kylie this is probably a stupid question but did you ever see him again oh uh, no never <laughs> <laughs> I had to give him room service <laughs> sucked <laughs> Tom, I feel like over in Asia, there's some crazy ideas that they spin, uh, very innovative, and try and change the workplace for the better. And over in Thailand, this is one of those that is pretty bizarre, and I think a lot of people in Australia would get around it. A Thai company has introduced Tinder Leave. Tinder so Leave? This is the idea that you can get Tinder leave. is in the dating app. Yep, Tinder in the dating app, that you get leave, so you could take days off, take time off, hours throughout the day, to go on paid dates. What? So long as you're using Tinder and you're not just doing it to laze on the couch by yourself, if you can prove to your boss that, yes, I've got a match, I'm going to see he or her out in the streets for a date, you will get paid for that. Wouldn't everyone just sign up to Tinder to have days off of work and go on dates? Yeah, exactly right. Well, that's what I'm thinking. You're not always going to go on a date. Sometimes you will just want to, I don't know, Go to the pub with your mates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's going to be other exceptions where you want to do other stuff. Yeah, and as it's long a as group you, date. As long as you've got a match. <laughs> as long as you've got a match and you show your boss, you're good to go. But it's such a strange thing. And it came about because one guy in the company apparently went on a date. He comes back to his boss and he says, look, I was really stressed. The date didn't go well because I was stressed because of work. All of your hard, you know, <laughs> file reporting and documents I have to scan through was doing my head in. The date was ruined. And so I deserve a paid leave for Tinder dates. So it's a bit more stress free. Right. And so just this company is doing it? Just or? this company. It's not right. all in Thailand. That'd be yeah. shambles. <laughs> Can you imagine nobody working, everyone on dates? <laughs> everyone would just be single. Yeah. <laughs> you just wouldn't want to be in a relationship. <laughs> I'm loving the testimonies from this company, though. One lady who went on a date, she's like, yeah, it's really positive, it's good. I went on a walk in a park and got fed watermelon on a skewer. (laughs) Imagine getting paid for that. It sounds like the life. Imagine if I was just like, Tom, I'm going to clock off, actually. I want to get fed fruit in botanic gardens on a so-called date and get paid for it. Holy moly, is that the time? 11 o'clock. I've got to go. I've got a date. (laughs) Where is it? Oh, the pub. Yeah, it's foolproof. Foolproof system. Bring it over here. I'll be there for a few hours. Let me know when you knock off. (laughs) Last month, the month of August, IKEA did a big survey 
of Aussies and their sleep habits. Yeah, good stuff. And the research found, it was a nationwide survey, right? So they did a massive scale survey and they found that 90% of Aussies wake up feeling tired despite a full night's sleep with Gen Z being the most affected. Yeah, see, I feel like this is a huge thing. You do hear about a lot of young people not getting a good night's sleep, whether it's, you know, addicted to technology, you stay mm. up late because of that, you know, there's all these factors that seem to come out of these surveys. And it doesn't matter if they're getting their seven hours or more, they're right. still saying they're waking up tired. And uh, nearly half, 49% of the people that were surveyed admitted to being unsure, not confident about choosing the right pillow or mattress and stuff like that, which can also affect your sleep. Uh, it, there's some interesting stats that came along with it that uh, 60% of Aussies are side sleepers. They sleep on their side. Right, more than half. More than yeah. half, 60%. Only 11% of Aussies sleep on their back and 8% on their stomach. Yeah, see, I never really go back. It's always side or stomach. Yeah, and uh, that also uh, 11% of Aussies prefer to be clothed in bed. No, sorry, most people prefer to be clothed in bed. 11% surveyed saying they sleep naked. Right. And the one that really got me was 58% of Australians say they need complete silence to sleep. Right, complete. See, I, I'm the complete opposite. I have a little bit of music going or, you know, even background TV stuff, reruns, nothing too stimulating. You want to do shows that you've seen before <laughs> that you know what happens. But, yeah, I'll have something on in the background like that. Yeah, well, I mean... It, going into that stuff, 35% of Gen Zs that were surveyed said that they have to fall asleep watching YouTube, uh, TV, listening to an audio book or even the radio to get yeah. themselves to sleep. We do want to go to the text line. What do you need to fall asleep, Adelaide? Yeah, is it a rare thing that a lot of people don't use or is it pretty common? Do you use something? Uh, yes. I. <laughs> this is something that has come into my life recently. But you know when you catch a flight and, you know, say you're going on Emirates and you get the sleep mask, mm. uh, they give you like a little eye mask that you get a little pack. <laughs> Don't tell me. I've been using <laughs> uh, Emirates eye mask. You're an eye mask for, wearer. For the last couple months and it has changed my life. Wow. I'm telling you, the complete darkness. I like to have something on as well. I like to listen to something while I sleep. So in case there is any brightness from the TV or from my phone or laptop, I've got the eye mask there to just get it back to complete black. Wow. One step away from being Scrooge in a nightgown, I reckon. <laughs> It's really heading towards that attire. <laughs> I mean, Eye mask. Another classic one. A lot of people listen to like white noise or forest sounds. I don't know. This isn't relaxing to me. Yeah, I had a phase when I do the forest sounds as well, but then there'd be the occasional squawk of some obscene bird, like, Meh! <laughs> and it would keep you awake. You know, not all of them are that soothing. <laughs> Sorry, how does the bird sound? I'm not doing the bird again. How does it? I'm, I'm not doing the bird I've again. I've never heard that no, bird. I'm not doing do the bird again. again. No, do the bird. no, you do the bird. Give me the bird. No, I'm not doing the bird. <laughs> <laughs> There's the bird. <laughs> Stick the finger off of me. <laughs> no, I used to do whale sounds as well. Whale sounds? Yeah, yeah, the classic. I feel like everyone goes through a whale sounds period. Yeah, right. I've tried it. It didn't really work for me. But we want to hear from you, Adelaide. What do you need to fall asleep? We got this one here. I'm 37, but I can't sleep without my teddy bear. Yeah. From Jesse. Yeah. Uh, how about this one? Have to have a fan only no on no matter what the weather is. I don't know about the fan. So, like, even if it is really hot in the middle of summer, I just cannot fall asleep with this racket. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's well, that like sounds a big like a jet, a jet carrier or something <laughs> transporting cars through the sky. That's heavy ads. That's not a usual fan. Oh, but even the usual fans, I can't, I can't get around bad. it. <laughs> what about this one here? My dogs used to bark at thunderstorms, so I have a Google Nest at night. I say, hey, Google, sleep sounds thunderstorm. I don't know. Thunderstorm seems a bit heavy as well to try yeah. and get to sleep to. I, don't, I can't fall asleep to this either. It's just kind of eerie, isn't it? How was it the other night as well when the thunderstorms were happening? I didn't have a good night's sleep. It sounded like the walls were going to collapse <laughs> on itself. Like, it just makes you feel tense. I don't I get guess, these people that love thunder. I guess you feel more safe if it's just coming from your phone. <laughs> hey, another text here. Uh, either melatonin, meditation music, or the window open. Again, not to, not to say, like, we're, we're glad people are texting in telling us what they need to fall asleep. But I cannot t get asleep to this meditation stuff. 
Have you been longing for a calm mind and inner peace? No, I haven't. Yeah, actually. It's, <laughs> it's just a little bit wanky. <laughs> It's the narrator always it's, puts me off. It's the narrator that puts me off too because I can't fall asleep because I'm trying to listen to what he's saying. I'm <laughs> yeah. My mind's too provoked. What about this one here? This one's heavy. When I was in the Navy, the noise of the engines would rattle through the whole ship and when something... It was something you had to sleep through. Because of this, I need a car engine sound playing every time I sleep at home. <laughs> there's, there's one for all the rep heads. Paid for the Formula One <laughs> channel 24-7. Keep it going. I reckon I've heard this coming from my dad's room. Yeah. <laughs> Another one here. Uh, good morning, boys. I hate to admit it, but I need my vape to fall asleep. I have it sat right. on my bedside table so when I wake up, I can go straight outside and have a morning vape. Not proud of it, but it's something I have to do. Yeah, it's a bit of a crux. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, uh, that's something. You, that's a habit you should kick. Yeah, definitely. Maybe try the meditation. Maybe try the thunderstorms <laughs> or something. They actually sound pretty good compared to that. Yeah. Got this one here. I need to listen to the Minecraft soundtrack to get to sleep. Not a bad shout. It's, it's the got, Minecraft soundtrack goes pretty hard. It's got some bliss piano there. Hey, Tammy's texted in here saying, I need complete darkness, including the little red light on the TV. I need it covered up. Wow. Yeah. That's very particular, isn't it? Yeah, I get that as well. Ow. You need to get the one? eye mask. <laughs> what, what one? I only sleep good lying next to someone, so I haven't had a bad night's sleep since meeting Tom's mum. Oh, come on. <laughs> He's back. Again. This month, September 19th, the yep. new Transformers film, Transformers 1 with uh, Chris Hemsworth, comes out. Yeah, there's a few big names in this one. It's absolutely huge. Haven't seen a Transformers movie in a while, so it's taken the world by storm a bit. Yeah, well, the last few were the Mark Wahlberg ones. They flew under the radar. Shocking. I don't believe they were that great. No. So hopefully Transformers 1 is very good. But there, there's so many different things that movies do to promote their movie, right? Mm. I mean, recent times we've seen a lot of the popcorn buckets go gangbusters. Yep. But Transformers 1, they're switching things up and they're doing something nationwide here in Australia this Friday at 3 o'clock. They're going to be releasing Transformer-flavoured gelati. Now, there's Optimus. you got got... Uh, Optimus Prime's Red Velvet Matrix. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, vanilla one. <laughs> yeah, you got a vanilla one. Uh, all your favourite Transformers have their own flavours. And this Friday at 3 o'clock, every gelatissimo in the country will be giving out 100 free scoops of this gelati until stock runs out. See, it's such a good marketing technique. It's great. Everyone loves ice cream. Everyone wants free ice cream. I think it's a very ballsy move to say everyone trek down to the one shop at a specific time. Like, surely it would be like Black Friday of ice cream, <laughs> people throwing chairs, people nudging old ladies out of the way. It's going to be pandemonium when, when you get in that ice cream. Yeah, right. So you think it's going to be the apocalypse. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a little life hack you can do to get free gelati or ice cream, doesn't matter what, wherever you go, at all times, at any hour of the day, so as long saying, as they're open. You're saying skip the marketing bull crap. Don't need to go here Look, for free ice cream. There's another way to get all your delicious treats for free. I mean, head on down if you want, but I'm telling you right now, we could go get some free gelati. Well, when they open, mm. we could go get some free gelati Granted, from down the road. Time permitting. Yeah. <laughs> when they when those doors open, then the plan will work. We're not breaking in to get a free gelati. Of course, that is another way. But no, no. The life hack is, Callum, all of these places do free samples. Mm. All you got to do is just keep getting free samples. So you think if you just keep asking for those tiny little spoons and say, I want another one, I want another one, they'll keep doing it. I'm telling you, if you play it right, if you play your cards right, there is no way they'll cut you off. I think they'll cut you off when you start heading towards the double digits. Okay, double digits, sure. But I reckon by double digits time, you're past your one scoop. Well, you've already had your equivalent to one scoop I'd mashed say, into the ice cream. I'd say the five to seven free samples would be the equivalent to around one scoop. All right, and that's where you think the clerk, whoever's behind the stall there, will cut you off. Yeah, I reckon 100% you could get... You, like, how many free samples do you think you've had most? In one go? In probably one go. four. Four. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. And did they did they seem like they were getting annoyed? Did they seem like at any point they were going to cut you off? No, but it wasn't no. eight. <laughs> it wasn't eight. <laughs> <laughs> Heading towards the double digits. Yeah, you just look indecisive. <laughs> it is a way to do it. You know, I, I, I think we could go prove this. I reckon let's give it a try. See how many digits we can get up to on the free tasting test. We're about to go expose the whole ice cream market. Do you reckon we can get up to 20? How about one 20? for every flavour? No way. There could 20. be a record. Let's break it. How I think many 12. free samples can we get? I think 12 would be the 
the max you could get. All right, let's try it. All right, we'll give it a go, Adelaide. We'll get back to you to find out if we can get this life hack for free ice cream for life. Tom, you hear about people putting finishing times on their parties. Sometimes you see it in the invitation, but this one is particularly bizarre and it's someone we know. Mm. So it's for a 29th. Here's all the facts. It's a 29th party. She's got all of her friends. It's from 2 p.m., but she's put an end time at 6 p.m. Yeah. Now, this has caused a stir with everyone because they've one thought, what the hell, it's quite early. It's Who a 29. an end time on a party? And it's a Saturday, and exactly right. An end time on a party. Usually people would say, hey, till late. And you got that ambiguous till late. You don't know where it's going to go. But to say, I'm going to cut it off at specifically 6 p.m. If you're not out of my house at 6 p.m., you're done for. Get out. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a weird one putting an end time on a party. Even putting too late, I think, is weird. Mm. Just put a start time, and then people can trickle out. And you can work it out yourself. And if you really want people to leave, just make up an excuse to get them out. I mean, I think we should go to the text line here. Can you pop an end time on a party, Adelaide? Is that reasonable, or is it weird? Because all of her friends have turned around and said, this is ridiculous, we want to do something big for your 29th. And you're cutting us out, putting rules on us because apparently we're going to get too feral. <laughs> As if they're like gremlins yeah. that have a rule or a curfew. Two feet of water yeah, after midnight. Yeah, exactly. There's a curfew <laughs> time before they all get too crazy. So she's capped it off at 6 p.m. I, uh, the, the last place I worked had a, a, my boss, he put on like a barbecue for a bit of a Christmas show thing at his house. Same thing. Put an end time. Five o'clock. Mm. See, I two till five. I think as like I get five o'clock, get the hell out of my house. And it's I think, like, yeah. All right, I can understand it from a boss's point of view, but still, I don't think I left till six. I feel like I can get around it in the sense that it does get to a point sometimes where you think I would love everyone to get out of my house. It's yeah, had its time. It's had its time in the sun, and I want people to leave. However, my fear would be is that I've got an end time, and then I want people to stay. <laughs> and people are like, well, you said leave at six o'clock. No, no, you no, jerk. No. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Actually, you can stay around. We do want to hear from you, Fresh Fam. Are you for or against the end time on a party? We're going to go to Maz over in Ranella. Maz, good morning. How are you going? Yeah, good guys. Yourself? Very good. Yeah, not bad, mate. Now, hey, are you for or against this end times on parties? Uh, no, I'm against it. Um, but I admit that I had used a finish time before because I had another event. That I had organized. Um, so, so just when I was younger, I had like different groups of friends when I was younger. So I would have one party with one group of friends and then I'd end that to go organize or have my other party with my other group of friends. Now, Maz, the, the second party that you're having with your other group of fer- friends is later on in the evening. Would you say they're your more fun friends, the friends you want to party with? Uh that's a tricky question because if I answer yes, then that's going to say a lot about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Maz, tell us, it was it a weird one? You did you just didn't want to blend the two groups together? It was kind of that worlds colliding situation. Well, eventually, that's what I ended up doing because it just came too hard, like to, to, to do an all day thing and an all night thing. So, <laughs> how did um, the yeah. Maz? You sound like a party animal, yeah. mate. How did, how did the first group of mates <laughs> react to the end time? Uh. They didn't really. It was just like, okay, cool. It finishes at six or whatever, and then that's it. It wasn't really a a big thing. I think I think this is you know this is going back probably just before social media. It wasn't everything wasn't as big of a deal as it was as it is now. But yeah, there wasn't really really any yeah. reaction that. Day. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. The pictures haven't circulated of you out with other mates. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got Shannon and Surrey Downs. Tell us, have you done the end time for a party? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Good answer. I stop. No, I'm not for it. I'm not. I think it's very strange. No offense to your friend. Yeah, um, no, I'm taken. We totally agree. <laughs> We're on your side. Are her parents hosting the party? Is it a child's party? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it may as well be. It may as well be a Macca's party. Hey, get your parents to pick you up at six. It's fairy princess themed. <laughs> yeah, so, so Shannon, you reckon for a kid's party it's kind of normal? Yeah, kids' party is all right because, you know, you hire the place, you actually physically get kicked out from the venue anyway. Yeah. But, like, a normal party, no, I find it really strange. And you can also just wrap it up naturally, like, do the cake. Like, we're doing the cake now, so you can all head home if you want to. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Shut up. Stacking up around people. How would you you react? (laughs) How would you react if you were getting kicked out at 6 p.m. by one of your best mates? 
I probably would just stay, I'll be honest. Most of my friends would be listening and be like, yeah, she definitely does. Like, yeah. I, I'd just stay. I'd be like, Stand your ground. Having to go get oh. your own drinks. No longer got a reasonable yeah, host. No <laughs> Good on you, Shannon. Hey, on the text line, people agreeing. We got Yola here texting in saying, Hi, guys, if you're hosting for adults, absolutely not. Do mm. not put an end time on the party. But if you've got a party for children, yes, put an end time. Otherwise, parents will drop kids off at your party and leave them there all day. Great stuff. It seems like the consensus, this 29th is actually a 14th. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, if you missed out on starring in The Office Australia, there's a new gig here in the country that requires the same acting chops, but it's not for a TV show. So this company here in Australia, pretty much, they misrepresented themselves to a bunch of investors and auditors. Right. And because of this, it has aligned with them selling the business, but they want to show save, save face pretty much, and they want to look good to sell the business off and pretty much... <laughs> make everything seem up to scratch. So what they've proposed is that people come work for the company as actors for 150 bucks a day and just pretend to be office clerks. Yeah, right. So 150 bucks a day, it's a two-day contract. And what, they've gone to actual actors. Not They haven't gone to Seek or anything. No, they've, this is on Seek. I, I'm exaggerating when I say actors. It's Yeah, no, they, they've gone to an acting... Uh, Website yeah. to look for actors here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, actually, yeah. On the yeah, no. That, so they are looking for actors. Yeah, and it's uh, but it is bizarre, right? And they want to boost morale. So it's uh, it's a complete morale boosting thing. So if they have all of these actors on the floor laughing, smiling, things like that, shuffling papers, it's going to look great for the investors. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just so a bizarre dumb. thing. So what is this? It's a high end skincare brand in Sydney. Uh, that are doing this. And, and it, well, it's just to make them look good, to sell it off at a higher price. Yeah, just so... You, no, because maybe they have a few bad eggs there. That's what I think. <laughs> I reckon there must be a few well, bad eggs at this office. They've got them trapped in the basement. <laughs> the office clowns stay are down there <laughs> till the VIP's clients are gone. That's what I reckon. All the office jokesters and clowns are just downstairs being held captive. Let's get, I don't know, Vince Colosimo in. <laughs> Let's get these fine Australian <laughs> actors and have a laugh. <laughs>